Hey, what's going on you guys? My name is Steven and today we're going to talk about how to create a portfolio for when you're applying for an electrician apprenticeship program. All right, you guys. Well, hey, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for checking this out. Basically, the entire purpose of this channel is really meant to be a resource for you if you're interested in becoming an electrician. So if this is a career that you're interested in pursuing, then you are definitely in the right place. And real quickly, I just want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Upstrive. And I'm going to tell you guys more about them in a little bit. Now this video is actually part three in a new playlist of videos I've recently put out, which is basically about how to create the documents that you need when you go and apply to become an electrician. And so in my first two videos, I talked about writing a cover letter and writing a resume. And as you know, this video today is about how to create a portfolio. So let's get into this. So what is a portfolio and what is the purpose of it? So basically a portfolio is a collection of photos and documents that you're gonna show the interview committee when you go and take your interview. And the way that I like to think about a portfolio is that it's basically the proof that you need to show the interview committee that you are absolutely the best applicant for the apprenticeship. And so as we're talking about the things that you're gonna to add to your portfolio, I just want you to keep that in mind. So what should you include in your portfolio? So with a portfolio being specific to you and your experiences, it's going to look a little bit different for everybody. But if you already watched my first two videos in the series and you already created your cover letter and your resume, then hey, congratulations, you actually already created the first two documents that you're going to need to include in your portfolio. Now the next thing that you're going to want to include in your portfolio is a collection of letters of recommendation. Now these can really be written by anybody that would highly recommend you as a good candidate for the apprenticeship, but typically letters of recommendation are going to be written by previous employers. But one thing that I would also consider is reaching out to previous professors or teachers that you've had that would highly recommend you as a good student. And the reason why is a big portion of the apprenticeship is going to be your in-school learning. So definitely consider that as well. Also, if you know anyone that's already in the trade, then it's a great idea to reach out to them and see if they'll write you a letter as well. Because when it comes to letters of recommendation, the more that you have, the better. When I applied for my apprenticeship, I think I had somewhere around five letters of recommendation that I added to my portfolio. But even if you can only get one or two, that's still gonna be huge. So here's a pro tip for you guys. Something that I discovered when I was applying for the apprenticeship is that people can take a really long time to write letters of recommendation. So I would make sure to ask as soon as possible for letters of recommendation from whoever you plan on asking just to give them time to get it done and get it to you before you actually need to go and have your interview. Now the next thing that you should add to your portfolio is any industry related certifications. Now if you don't have a background in construction, then you may not have any trade related certifications that you can include in your portfolio. But if you were something like a material handler or something else similar to that prior to applying for the apprenticeship, then it's likely that you're already going to have some of these certifications. And these can include things like OSHA 10, any sort of lift trainings like scissor, boom, forklifts. Um, and then you can also include any sort of like CPR or first aid certifications as well. Anything like that is really going to look good if you can include that in your portfolio. Basically the way that you're going to add these to your portfolio is by taking a photo of it or scanning it and then printing it out and writing some sort of a caption above or below explaining what it is. The next thing that you should definitely include in your portfolio if this applies to you is any sort of military documentation. Now the topic of serving in the military and being a veteran is really a topic that deserves a whole video. And it's a video that I do plan on doing at some point, hopefully in the near future. But for this video, basically all you need to know is that the IBEW very highly values our veterans. And because of that, you're definitely gonna have an increased chance of getting into the apprenticeship if you do have a former military background. So yes, if this applies to you, this is definitely something that you wanna include in your portfolio. All right, now before we talk about the next thing that you wanna to add to your portfolio, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Upstrive. Now for you guys that don't already know, Upstrive is an online tutoring company that is specifically for tradesmen. And with them, you get to have a personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring experience. So that way when you go to take your trade state licensing exam, you can absolutely knock it out of the park and pass it with flying colors. 
Now, when you get tutoring from Upstrive, you know that you're going to get somebody that knows what they're talking about. And that's because Upstrive's instructors are either retired trade professionals or still actively working in the field. And their instructors specialize in exam preparation for all sorts of different trades, including electrical, general contractors, plumbing, HVAC, you name it. So you can go to their website as a student using the link that I put in the description, select your trade, and then they're gonna match you with a perfect instructor. And if you find for any reason that you need any books or materials to prepare for and pass your exam, then you can get them directly from Upstrive's website. And if you already have your license, love to teach, and you like the idea of working from home, then you can actually become a tutor for Upstrive yourself and make some extra money. So if this is something that you're interested in and you want help passing your trade state licensing exam, then you guys got to check out Upstrive today. All right, now the next section that you want to include in your portfolio is photos of any projects you've worked on, things that you built, or anything that you've fixed. In my opinion, this is one of the most important sections to include in your portfolio. And that's because this is going to prove to the interview committee that you're mechanically inclined, that you're capable of working with tools, and that this is something that really does genuinely interest you. So one thing that I included in this section of my portfolio when I was applying for the apprenticeship is a picture of a desk that I made for my wife one year for Christmas. And really the desk wasn't anything too fancy, but it did turn out pretty nice. And I knew that me not having any prior experience in construction prior to getting into this apprenticeship program, having that picture of a desk that I made was gonna be really important because it showed that I could be a craftsman, work with power tools and do good quality work. Now, when I was applying for the apprenticeship, I really had a lot of fun with this section of the portfolio because I knew this was an area where I could get really creative and try to create things that would really impress the interview committee. And so one idea that I had of something to build was actually my own guitar pedal. Now, my thinking with building a guitar pedal and including it in my portfolio was that this would show the training committee that I was really genuinely interested in electrical work, that I was capable of working with it, and that I had a basic understanding of how electricity works. So with my portfolio and the interview in mind, I went online and actually found a guitar pedal kit where they sent me the circuit board and all of the electrical components that I needed. And I bought my own soldering iron and some rosin core solder and I was able to step by step follow the instructions and build my own guitar pedal. And I remember during my interview when I pointed this out to the interview committee, they saw the picture of the guitar pedal and I remember them being really impressed by it. So any sort of electronic kit that you can build or solder and include a photo of that in your portfolio, I think is a really good idea. Now I did mention this in one of my other videos, but on Amazon, I actually found a really basic and fairly inexpensive electronic soldering kit that basically allows you to make your own little FM radio. And that comes with all of the electrical components that you need. It comes with a soldering iron and the rosin core solder. So I'm gonna include a link to that in the description if you guys are interested in checking that out. But if you guys don't end up getting that one, then maybe that'll just give you an idea of different types of electrical soldering kits that you can get. Because if you can include, like I said, something like that in your portfolio, I think that it's gonna go a long way towards helping you get into the apprenticeship. So like I said, definitely get creative with the section and have fun with it. Anything that you can include in your portfolio that can demonstrate that you're mechanically inclined and capable of working on and fixing things is worth including. Anything that you can take a good before and after picture would be perfect. So if you guys need to change the spark plugs in your car or change your brakes, or if you have any appliances around the house that need fixing or any DIY projects that need to be done, even if it's just for the sake of getting some good pictures for this video, go do that right after you're done watching this video. Take a before and an after picture and include it in your portfolio. And of course, if you have any good photos of things that you've worked on from previous jobs that you've had, you also want to include those in this section as well. Now, another section that you should definitely include in your portfolio is any community service or volunteer work that you've done, especially if it relates to working in the trades. One thing that I included in this section of my portfolio was a picture of me and my wife on one of the mission trips that we went on back in high school to Mexico with our sponsor kid. So if you're currently doing any sort of community service or volunteer work, make sure that you're documenting those hours and taking pictures of yourself serving your community. It's going to be really important that you can show the interview committee that you are a well-rounded individual and that you can definitely represent the IBEW in a good way. 
So I'm going to include a link to my training center's website here in Portland, Oregon with IBEW Local 48. They give some really good helpful tips when it comes to creating your portfolio. But one thing that they include in these tips is actually a list of different trade related community service recommendations. So if you check that out, it'll give you a good idea of different things that you can do if you're not currently involved in community service. Another good thing that you can include in your portfolio is any trade related classes that you've taken. You may have already mentioned this in your resume or cover letter, but it doesn't hurt to create a section for this in your portfolio as well. In this section, you can include any trade related classes that you've taken, maybe at a community college or online, or even any trade related classes that you took back when you were in high school. Whether it be wood shop, auto shop, anything like that, it's definitely worth including and I think it's going to go a long way towards helping you get accepted into the apprenticeship. Now, as far as what IBEW Local 48 suggests to include in your portfolio, that's gonna pretty much be everything. But if you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan of going the extra mile and doing anything that you can to make yourself stand out and be the best candidate that you can possibly be. So if there's anything that you can think of that you really want the interview committee to see and be aware of, make sure to include it in your portfolio. So here's an example of an extra section that I added to my portfolio that I think actually really went a long way towards helping me get accepted into the apprenticeship because I remember them being really impressed when I showed them this. So before I got into the apprenticeship, I was actually a store manager for an AT&T store. And my store, I was really big on customer service and just doing our absolute best to give every customer the best possible experience that we could. And so my store actually ended up being ranked number one in the entire region for, I think it was like three months in a row. It was a really huge accomplishment. We got lots of shout outs for it. But what I ended up doing in my portfolio was including a printout showing this. And when I actually went and had my interview and I was showing the interview committee my portfolio, I pointed this out and it was something that definitely really impressed them because not only did it show that I'm capable of giving a good customer experience, but it showed that I can also lead a team to give a good customer experience as well. And as you know, as an electrician, we're not directly working with our customers, but everything that we do is ultimately for a customer. So a good customer experience is really important. So one more section that I would really recommend including your portfolio is your hobbies. You don't have to get too crazy with this section, but if you have any hobbies, like any sports that you like to do, if you like to hike, mountain climb, swim, anything at all that would demonstrate that you're capable of doing physically demanding work, I would highly suggest including that in the section for that very reason of proving that you are able to do physically demanding work. One thing that I really wanna make sure that you guys are doing also is checking with your IBEW Locals website to make sure that you're including everything in your portfolio that they are asking you to include. And that means maybe there's also some sections that they don't want you to include in your portfolio. So if that's the case, then just make sure that you're checking on exactly what they want and that you're making that happen. All right, so now that you know all the things that you need to include in your portfolio, let's talk about how you should actually put that together. Now with all of the time that you're gonna be spending putting together the documents in your portfolio, you're definitely gonna to wanna to put it together in a way that looks nice and will impress the interview committee. All right, now before I made this video, I actually spent some time at the store looking at different things that I could buy to put together a portfolio. And one thing that I found that I liked a lot were these Oxford, uh, what do they call it, a report cover. And basically this isn't anything fancy. This one only cost me $2 at the store but basically it's just a really nice, neat way to put together your documents. And it has this little clip on the inside so you can put all of your different portfolio papers together. Um, ideally, you're gonna have maybe some sort of table of contents in the front, your cover letter, your resume, and so on. But these things can hold you know, quite a few papers. Um, you don't have to get this one, but really just anything that is similar to this, I would highly recommend and at the very least, get some sort of a manila folder to keep all of your documents nice and neatly organized. Another thing that I found at the store that I liked a lot were these Avery tabs. And what I would recommend doing is getting some sort of tabs for your portfolio and putting them on each section. That way, when you are actually showing the interview committee your portfolio, you can just refer them to different sections and then they can quickly and efficiently find what it is that you want to point out in your portfolio. So for example, if you want to show them 
hey, uh, will you go ahead and turn to my hobbies? I want to show you something or I want to show you a project that I worked on. They'll easily be able to navigate your portfolio with the tabs. And you don't have to do that, but I just think that the more organized that you can be and the more time that you spend on actually putting together your portfolio, the more impressed the interview committee is going to be. And that's really what the interview is all about. Now, I unfortunately don't have the portfolio that I made when I applied for the apprenticeship program. Otherwise, I would show you guys exactly what it looked like. But one thing that I did when I put mine together is I got something very similar to this, um, except for the cover of my portfolio was transparent in the front and the back. And there was like a long black strip that ran along the side that held all of the documents together. And if that interests you, you might be able to find something similar to that on Amazon. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of looking around and include some links for you guys um, in the description as well. But one thing that you really want to make sure that you do when you're putting together your portfolios is make sure that you're putting together enough portfolios for each person that is in the room when you're having your interview. At the very least, I would plan for putting together five portfolios. Most likely, you're going to have between one and four people interviewing you, and then you also want to have a portfolio for yourself as well. So as I've said multiple times in this video now, your portfolio is gonna be the proof that you need to show the interview committee that you are absolutely the best applicant for the apprenticeship program. And so I would definitely spend some time before your interview thinking about the different ways that you can incorporate your portfolio in the different sections of it into your interview answers. In fact, I would even recommend taking time before your interview and practicing talking through your entire portfolio. The things that you're including, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they know about and that they see, and they may not actually take the time to look at every page unless you actually direct them to look at it. So if you can practice beforehand talking through each page, even if it's just quickly of your portfolio, you're gonna feel that much more prepared and confident when you're showing the interview committee during your actual interview. It's gonna be really important that you can do this quickly and efficiently while still showing the interview committee everything that you want them to see. And that's because most interviews are generally going to be timed. I know here at IBEW Local 48, we have a time limit of, I think, 10 minutes for each person that is having their interview. So on top of answering the questions in your interview, you're going to want to make sure that you are prepared to quickly, like I said, show off your portfolio. All right, you guys, and real quickly, one thing that I think is really worth mentioning right now is with all the social distancing and everything going on, you may not actually be able to hand out copies of your portfolio to the interview committee during your interview. Some places will allow this, but other places may not. And so what I would just recommend is to be mentally prepared for that. And if you can't actually physically hand out portfolios to the interview committee, just be prepared to at least hold up your portfolio and then point out the different things that you want them to see during your interview. There's also a chance that your local might be having your interviews online. And so if that's the case, then you can just do the same thing where you're gonna hold up your portfolio to the webcam to show the interview committee the different sections within it. And if you guys wanna get real fancy and the interview video chat software allows for this, then you can actually screen share your portfolio um, you know, just by having it saved in like a document on your computer. So that's definitely a workaround, a way that you can still show your portfolio even if you're not actually having an interview in person. If you do think that you're gonna be in one of those situations where you actually need to hold up your portfolio, then you might actually wanna consider printing out bigger pictures so that way you can still show the interview committee good quality pictures from a distance. So hopefully you can see the importance of spending time on your portfolio and not just throwing it together the night before your interview. Honestly, the sooner that you can start working on it, the better. So I unfortunately don't have a copy of the portfolio that I made when I applied to the apprenticeship myself, but I still wanna show you guys sort of how I formatted my portfolio. And so what I went ahead and did was I just made a couple of sample pages that I'll show you guys so you can sort of have an idea of a way that you can format your portfolio. But honestly, you can get as creative as you want and make this look however you want. So the first thing that I included in this example portfolio for you guys is actually a cover page. And I think this is a really good idea to include for your portfolio. Now in this cover slash title page, whatever you wanna call it, um, I included a list of all the different sections that the interview committee can find in my portfolio. You don't necessarily have to number them like I did, but if you at least list the different sections on the front of the portfolio, and then also write down those sections on the tabs that you include in your portfolio, 
it's going to help the interview committee to quickly navigate your portfolio as you're showing it off to them. Now one thing that you'll notice is that I actually included a picture of my family on this example portfolio. And this is something that I really did when I was actually applying for the apprenticeship. And the reason why I did this is really twofold. Uh, the first reason was pretty much just to show that I'm a well-rounded and responsible individual. And the second reason, you know, say what you will, call this a cheap shot, but I really just wanted to, you know, remind the interview committee that it wasn't just my future that was on the line, but it was also my family's future. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with including this in your portfolio uh, if it's something that you want to include. Now this next page that I want to show you guys is going to be a good example of a way that you can lay out the different sections in your portfolio. So you'll notice this is the project section of my portfolio. These are things that I actually included in my real portfolio when I applied for the apprenticeship. Um, of projects that I worked on. And like I mentioned, I included a photo of a desk that I made for my wife one year for Christmas. So I just went ahead and literally stuck that picture right on the page and then did a little caption explaining what it was. And then I also put a picture of that guitar pedal that I made as I was building it. And then I put a caption for that as well. And that's pretty much the format that I went with for uh, my portfolio. I didn't do anything fancy. I just wanted the interview committee to quickly see what it was that I did and then have a really brief explanation as to what the picture was. Now, as far as examples go, that's pretty much all I have for you guys, but I really just wanted to show you this. That way you can at least sort of visualize what your portfolio is going to look like before you make it. But like I said, get as creative as you can, make it your own thing. It's going to be specific to you and your experiences, but I hope that you guys really found the information that I talked about in this video to be useful. So. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, that is it. Like I said, I really hope that you found this video to be useful. If you did, would you go ahead and just smash that like button to let the YouTube algorithm know to recommend my videos to more people. And then if you found this to be useful and this is a career that you are interested in pursuing, definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel so that way you can be alerted every time that I upload a new video. And then one more time, I just want to give a huge thank you to Updrive for sponsoring this video. If you guys haven't checked them out yet, remember I have a link to their website in the description. So definitely make sure to check them out. And then last but not least, if you guys have an Instagram page and you want to keep up with me in my day-to-day -day life as a sustaining electrician at a hospital, then definitely check out that link to my Instagram and make sure to follow me on there. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Your support means the world to me. Have a good one.